No matter how excited I am about a project, I always hate the first step whenever I come back to continue working on it. Getting myself back up to speed and priming myself with the info needed to actually get started. Even if I've been really organized and collected and kept everything for this project together in one place, I still have to open up all of the files and browse through them to find the info that I need. And this very task of refilling my brain with the info that's needed to actually do something useful for the project is enough for me to be like, screw it, I'm just gonna go do something else instead. So if this sounds anything like your experiences, then I might just have a technique that could help you solve it. But before I give you the info on that, let's talk about why this technique is useful and the actual problems that it can help you solve. So to prime ourselves to jump back into a project, we typically want to recall the specifics and details. And this is very difficult because if you're using files and folders, they just don't operate at that details level. They take a top-down approach. There's a hierarchical structure that you have to navigate to get to your information. And as you move through your folders and are presented with collections of files, the finest level of info we get is the name of that file. And that can often lack the what, why, and how the information inside it is useful, usually because the contents encompasses a lot of different answers to those questions. And the details you want and need are hidden somewhere inside those files. So no matter what system you're using, however effective it is, you can't really see or know which of those files contains the details you want. And I'm sure some of you are saying, but Maddie, I can just use search. And the next layer to this problem, which you may optimistically believe you can solve with search, is finding relevant information from inside a few different files and bringing it together quickly. And herein lies the problem with search, in that whatever term you type in to search for, it will only return exactly that phrasing or keyword that you use. And often the information you're looking for won't actually make use of that phrase or keyword. And so any information that's relevant can be overlooked. And so ultimately, the system that you're using clashes with the need for finding details. And that's why the getting back into the project headspace is so hard, because you've got that setup activity of going out and retrieving all of that information so that you're primed with it all to actually get started. And you know that that can take a long time, and so it puts you off doing it. So the technique I'm excited to share lets you start to operate at that details level, so that that information that you normally spend a while looking for to get back into your projects can even be set up there waiting for you. So this technique is used within social sciences, specifically for qualitative analysis, which is all about working with words. And in this setting, it's typically used to understand groups of people's opinions and perspectives on different topics. So the information is usually in the form of interviews or surveys. And so one of the biggest challenges in qualitative analysis and working with lots of written information is that you can come across sections that have the same meaning, but use entirely different vocabulary. So it's not a simple search or control F type operation. So in contrast to numbers where 75 and 75, 32 is 32, and we'd all agree on that, the phrase is jotting it down, make a note, add it to my to-do list, use entirely different words but could all be grouped together under the shared sentiment of written reminders. And the technique to organize these snippets of detail is known as data coding. And so coding is the process of identifying a section of text and adding a label to it. And that label concisely captures the sentiment or meaning of that text snippet. And by adding these labels, you start to be able to pull together information from various different places, either different files or different locations in the same file that share the same label. And once you have collated these responses together, you can start to look at how these in combinations start to reveal patterns and trends. And so in data coding, the labels that you're adding to your snippets of text are referred to as codes. Codes because they are often abbreviations. And the codes are added into what's known as a coding frame, which is a centralized list of all the codes that you're using and adding so that you can see all of them. And as you work through a source, you grab the significant information and assign it a code, which you add into your coding frame. And this code is often a concise description that captures the sentiment of the entire snippet that you've saved. And in the qualitative analysis setting where you're working through different interviews with the ultimate goal of identifying trends and patterns in the data, you can create as many new codes as you like, but as much as possible, you want to be adding new snippets into existing codes. And when complete, you go back through your coding frame and start to cluster similar codes together under a common theme. And in this way, you pull together a collection of text snippets and information to start to see what further information you can gather from the info you've collected and if there are any patterns or trends in the data. So this was quite a generalized and brief intro because there's a lot of different approaches and methods that you can use in qualitative analysis. And for me, this technique ticks a huge number of boxes when it comes to taking notes and organizing and collecting information together. So going through and creating those codes or quick concise summaries as to what the information is about and having created that coding frame, it makes it much easier for you to go back through and review all the information you've collected and assign it to the relevant theme or topic. 
So you've gone through and been very specific and you get to keep that, but you can also start to pull together collections of information. Now there's definitely some similarities here to atomic notes, Zettelkassen and other note taking techniques. But I think there's three main elements of data coding that can make it so useful for organizing your information. Number one being the labeling of the text snippets. And this just really allows you to focus in on those details because details are really what drive your projects forward. And if you start to organize those details by adding labels, this really helps address that limitation of keyword search. Because if it has the label, it will appear. Second is that it sets you up for ongoing collation of your information. So as you come across new details and new sources of your information, you can add those labels and know that they will be collected together with all of the information you collected in the past and have added that label to without you needing to do anything else. And third is that it maps into your current flow. I've definitely found that a lot of the techniques I use to indicate that a piece of information was important were things like highlighting or copy pasting the information from the source into a summary file. And given that I was already putting some time into moving that information around, adding in a label felt like a relatively easy step to integrate. And the fourth bonus point is that you can label your information however you like. You can add as many labels as you want for any of the various topics or subtopics that that piece of info might be useful for. And you could even connect that information into specific tasks for your project. So since I've started using these principles, largely in my tool Protolist, I found that it has hugely sped up the time to action that it takes for me to re-immerse in a project and actually then be able to get moving on the next task, both in my personal projects, but also working as a team. And the snippets and labels on Protolist allow you to jump right back to where that piece of information came from. So if you're reviewing the info that someone else on the team has pulled out and flagged as important, you can very quickly jump back and gather some further context. And so that's why I think that data coding is the ultimate way to organize your information as it helps you get right to the details that you need to actually get moving on your projects. So I hope that I gave you a little bit more insight into data coding and how it's used to work with words more effectively and perhaps giving you some inspiration to try it out yourself. Thanks very much for watching and hope to see you again soon.